Father, we give you worship, we give you praise. We give you worship, we give you praise. We stand amazed in your presence this morning. Because there is nothing that you cannot do. Sweet Jesus, breathe upon your people in this place this morning. We pray for everyone watching online. We pray for everyone in the service. Father, let the word of God proceed with power. Let burdens be removed, let yokes be destroyed. Answer the questions in the heart of everyone we ask you. In the name of Jesus Christ, cause that no one leaves here the same way they came. Let us leave here transformed. Let us leave here changed. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people of God said, I believe in amen. Oh, come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome someone sitting beside you this morning. So it's good to see you. You're welcome to church. How you doing this morning? Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at someone say, I hope you are prepared for Valentine's tomorrow. I can be your value if you don't have. Hallelujah. I can be your value if you don't have. Amen. Praise God. Pastor said relationship. So this is where we are starting from. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you're welcome to church. It's beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, we're delighted that you're here. Thankful to God, you know, for such a time as this and such a great, great opportunity to just, you know, come together and fellowship and worship God. Hallelujah. Please don't forget in three weeks time, that Sunday, the 6th of March, that your next level is going to Ibadan. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Next level is going to be in Ibadan. So all of you watching online, if you're in the area, if you're in the city of Ibadan, the ancient city of Ibadan, please watch out, watch this space. Uh, the venue will be announced shortly. Uh, and then, you know, workers, all of that, we're going to have all of that. So please, please, please go ahead and, you know, start talking to your friends, start talking to your colleagues, start talking to everyone that you know. It's going to be very, very, very powerful. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then also, you know that Next Level Prayers also continues uh, this week. The Lord has made me laugh. The Lord has made me laugh. Glory to God. And I will declare that that will be your testimony this week. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, the Lord will make you laugh. And all those that hear your testimony will laugh with you. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Balaji has said it. That this month, the biggest word you will hear is congratulations. And I declare that that will be your testimony in this season. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're excited at the things that God is doing. We're excited at the things that, you know, God is doing. Glory to God. In all our campuses next week, Sunday as well, uh, is family and friends. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So bring your families, bring your friends. If you have celebrations, uh, you know, you want to dedicate children, uh, you want to do something uh, along those lines, go ahead and, you know, you can just get to the information desk outside. Let them know that you want to uh, dedicate, you want to thank God for, for a wedding, uh, you know, you want to thank God, you know, for something. So that's going to happen uh, next week, uh, Sunday. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. All right. And then also we are starting some very, very critical Bible courses uh, in our church from the 5th of March. We're starting very important Bible courses, um, Bible courses on prayer, Bible courses on hearing the voice of God. Uh, 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 a Bible course on, you know, about four different things. Let me just see, just to be sure, uh, you know, how to hear the voice of God, the ABCs of prayer, the fundamentals of faith, effective prayer course. These are courses that we're going to start uh, from the 5th of March. So you want to go ahead and register. You want to go ahead and register. The classes will happen for four Saturdays. It will be online. Uh, you know, and I, you know, wherever you are, you can register uh, and be a part of these classes as well. Glory to God. I said glory to Jesus. All right. So let's get into God's word uh, this morning. Proverbs chapter 18 uh, and verse 24. We're going to start from there uh, this morning. Uh, we've been talking about um, how God leverages relationships to help us how God leverages relationships to build us, how God leverages relationships to change levels for his people. Um, and, you know, Pastor Balaji did a phenomenal job uh, last week when he started to talk about this particular subject matter. Um, and, and, you know, he, he, he talked a lot about the role of relationships in our lives, what relationship 
uh, uh, means and, and, and how relationships are catalysts for change in the lives of men. Uh, and it's very critical that you understand uh, that, you know, if you are, uh, uh, you know, the Bible's verse that we're looking at this morning, Proverbs 18.24, says that a man that hath friends must show himself what? friendly, right? And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So if you are going to have friends, you must show yourself as a friendly person, all right? Otherwise, even if you have people around you, not everybody around you is a friend. Are you with me this morning? Not everybody that hangs around you is a friend, all right? I was listening to uh, someone, you know, they were interviewing uh, one of the former aides of one of the former pre presidents uh, in our country one time, and they said, and he was saying this, that look, that this is one of the biggest things that shocked him when the president was going to change. And he said what had happened was that they had announced that somebody else had won uh, the election. And all of a sudden, everybody that came into Asso Rock did not come to see him again. They were coming to see other people. So if I even accosted one of them, I said, ah, are you not seeing your friend? He said, baby, baby, forget, forget that thing. You know why? Because the fact that you have money and you have people around you doesn't mean you have friends. So it's very important. The Bible says that if you must be the kind of person that will have friends, you must start by showing yourself friendly. So the person looking for friends is the one who must initiate the process of first being friendly. Because even the friend that sticks closer than a brother, it is initiated one day. Come on, say hallelujah. It is initiated one day. And uh, 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 it's very, very important that you realize that, right? And it's also very important that you realize that there are different kinds of friends in our lives. There are different kinds of people in your life. People have different stakes in your life. So, have you noticed what happens many times is when people are looking for certain kinds of advice, they go and meet certain kinds of people because they know they will say certain kinds of things. So you can, you can, you know, you can uh, force yourself to hear what you should not be hearing because the people that you are, you know, listening to have different stakes in your life. So this morning, we want to delve into two or three things around identifying the right relationships and how you can take advantage or how you can leverage these relationships to get the things that you are trusting God for in your own life. So let's start out by talking about how you can identify the right relationships in your life. How you can identify what are three, four things that you can look at when you are trying to identify whether this is a relationship for me or this is not a relationship for me. Whether this is a strategic relationship in my life or this is not a strategic relationship in my life. Number one is vision. Somebody say vision. Somebody say vision. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. The Bible says that can two walk together except they what? Be agreed. In other words, if there is no alignment of vision and there is no alignment of purpose, you're a bit, you cannot necessarily call that person a very good friend. Listen, in life, people come into your life and people go. In life, people come, people go. The problem occurs when you are trying to keep the people that should have gone. Because vision is not forever. Some people's vision is with you up to a point. After that point, they must turn back. After a while, Lot must leave Abraham. Otherwise, their blessing will be constrained. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, there are certain things. Why? Because when you go in life, you must understand that do the people that you are hanging out with, do they see what you see? If you are trying to build a skyscraper and hanging out with someone that is building a bungalow, your skyscraper will not sky. Glory to God. Why? Because you are not aligned. So what happens is that you find entrepreneurs who are looking to succeed hanging out together. But the day one person's drive is bigger than the other person's drive, the other one dies, they will go. And let me say this to you, right? It is okay for relationships to end. Some relationships have expiry date. When you keep it beyond its expiry date, it starts to smell. Somebody say hallelujah. So, do they see what you see, right? When you see somebody, you can't be an expectant mother and you are hanging out with people that are not looking for children. Glory to God. Can two walk together except they what? They are aligned, except they are agreed. And that is why we have small groups in our church, right? One of the reasons why is because we understand that, listen, when managers come together, when people who love uh, running, I mean, some of you went to run marathon yesterday, praise the Lord. I don't know if I can't listen. <laughs> Hallelujah. My marathon is on my bed. Glory to God. 
That's where I run. I run in the motion. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. But, but if you wanted to run that type of a race, you can't do it alone. And it's not just about your ability to run because you have to do cardio exercises. You have to do this. You have to do that. Right. Because what, what happens is that when people, right, who have the same vision come together, they generate a lot more efficiency and power than people who don't have the same vision come together. Very, very important. So, when you are choosing friends and you are choosing relationships, right, vision is important. One of the reasons why relationships don't work is because people lose sight of the, of the purpose of the, of the relationship. Number two, what, how do you identify the right relationships? The guidance of the Holy Spirit. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10 from verse 30 to 32. The Bible says that the angel showed up to Cornelius and said, send for a certain person, right, who will come and tell you the things that I'm about to show you uh, or the things that you're about to do and all those types of things. The guidance of the Spirit. The guidance of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit can guide you into certain relationships. You know, there's... Uh, 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 an incredible man of God, a friend of the house, right? He has a very, you know, good relationship with, you know, Bishop Oedipo. So, one day I was wondering, how can he, you know, have this type of relationship with Bishop? Because, you know, you know, when you, you know how when you see certain people, you are like, oh, the people that they are mentoring must be at this particular level. This was years ago, right? And what happened? He said one day, he just wrote the man of God a letter. Something just said you should write the man of God a letter. Listen, do you know how many letters that man gets every day? He just looked at the letters and he picked out his own. Why? When he was talking about it, he said, the Holy Ghost told me. He said, this one, read it. I, do you understand what I'm saying? That's what happens when some people just like you for no reason. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Because there is a connection that the Holy Ghost has created in their heart for you. Do you understand? The Bible says that there is a spirit in man. The breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Listen, all of a sudden, there is something about you. They can just look at you and say, I like your bald head. You are not the first bald-headed person they are seeing. But they can't explain it, so they must find a reason. I don't know if you understand. The Holy Ghost must give them a reason to find a way to like you. I, do you understand? I just like the way you are. The Holy Ghost can lead you, and that's why you must pray. And that's one of the things we'll talk about, right? How to identify those relationships and how to connect with those relationships. Prayer is key. Because there are certain things only God can do. Amen? Glory to God. How do you identify the right relationships? Number three, people who have your desired results. People who have your desired results. Somebody like a Timothy saw someone like a Paul because Timothy also had a drawing, something drawing him into the work of the ministry, right? And in that situation, he chased after the relationship with Paul. Glory to God. So look for people that have, and listen, whatever you do, in whatever you do, Look for people who have similar values. Look for people who have similar values, right? Because otherwise, it will create a, a, a hindrance in your ability to receive from them. Praise the Lord. And I always say this, right? You know, you know some people are very interesting. You say they're looking for mentors. You say, okay, so where are you looking? Ah, he says, it's Dangote I want. Listen, it's too far. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's start from the one that is not yet Dangote, but is on his way to Dangote. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the people that are in his network now saw him in the raw state. Make sense? So when they saw him in the raw state and connected, then they went together. So because there are two ways to be lifted. You can be lifted by yourself or you can attach yourself to a moving head. Because when the head is lifted, the body will follow. That's why the Bible says the anointing that flows from the head, it goes down. Praise the Lord. See, there are some people that they, can never, they don't need to walk again for the rest of their lives. Why? They are connected to some people. That even the bread, the crumbs from their table, oh, it's good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Glory to God. That's why you see some people, they say, they'll print card, friend to the governor. Because they know that by virtue of this relationship, if I broke, it's my fault. I heard a story, a man of God was sharing a story about a particular person who was in the conference and somebody was sharing this story about, you know, a lawyer that came to meet another senior advocate. 
and was talking to him, and this was in like an event or like a conference or something. And I was talking to the senior advocate and said, Sir, help me, help me. My, my law firm is struggling. Things are not working. Help me, help me. Ha! And the man was looking at him, looking at him. He said, Okay, you know what I'll do? He said, Just follow me. And, you know, the guy came and, 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 and you know, come, come, my brother. So he came. And he just took him. So this is the stage where everybody is and everybody's seeing him. He said, oh yeah, just be talking to me. Just be talking to me. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said they did that. They walked front and back. After, when they got back, the man told him, he said, after this, if you are still poor, don't come back again. You don't know what he just gave him. Do you know what he just gave him? The guy said, what is going on here? I said, I'm looking, for connect, I'm looking for connection. You are just carrying me, moving me up and down. He said he didn't know what had happened to him until he got outside looking for a card to go home. Somebody just came and said, please, can I have your card, sir? Why? If you know that man, there's something about you. Hey. Ah, relationships are doors. Forget it. One day of favor is worth a thousand years of labor. How many years will that man use to walk to get to that place? Just walking, just he said, just walk. He said, just be talking to me. Mm. Mm. He was saying nothing. Mm. Mm. When he finished, go out. For, he said, the number of contacts he got that day, his law firm changed. Those are relationships. How much do you want to pay? If all the fees they pay you, you give the man, it's not okay. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So, values, similar values, similar values. If you value family, don't try to build relationships with people that don't. Otherwise, they will convert you into their ministry. Because you respect them, you will do what they do. Even though you know what they do should not be done. Make sense? Look for people with similar values. No matter where you are, listen, eh? It is only the man that is lazy that will wake up one day and say, God, I'm the only one serving you. God will always tell you, I have 7,000 people that have not bowed to bow. Glory to God. So, why don't people effectively engage relationships? Why is it that people lose good relationships or they don't effectively engage those relationships? Number one, offense. Acts chapter 15 from verse 36. Acts chapter 15 from verse 36. This was Paul and Barnabas. So, some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Next verse. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose name was also Mark. And, but Paul thought not good to take him with him because he departed from them when they were in Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Next verse. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder, one from another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Then what did Paul do? Paul went and chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Now, you remember, you know, Paul and Silas, they prayed and all of that. This is how they got connected before they both ended up in prison. Question, why couldn't Paul and Barnabas resolve their conflict? Only God knows. Maybe the impact of Paul will have been greater with Barnabas. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Offense. Am I saying that Paul was right? I don't know. I was not there. I don't know why they are fighting. Praise the Lord. Am I saying that Barnabas is better? I don't know. But one thing is for certain, that issue could have been resolved. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So what does that mean, right? Offense can slow down progress. Especially, see, husband and wife. You know, when husband and wife are fighting, things are slow in the house. Hallelujah. Decisions are not made very fast. Praise the Lord. And that's why you need to pray. Listen, child of God. Because sometimes you are trying to reach out to people who are, they are fighting. Imagine you are trying to reach out to someone, right? Maybe you are trying to reach out to someone's wife and you are going through the husband, but they are fighting. They are delayed. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Their delay belong comes to your delay. Glory to God. If it is an emergency and they've been fighting for the last seven days, what will you do? Slow down progress. Slow down progress. When we're in school, you had lecturers that will come and mark your script with the annoyance from the house. See, that's why if you don't pray, I don't know how you survive. 
There, because there are so many factors that are outside your control. Do you understand what I'm saying? So many factors outside your control. Offense. Offense. And listen, offense can also block what you receive. In Matthew 11 verse 6, Bible says that John got to a point where he was disillusioned. He sent people to Jesus. He said, are you the one or we should wait for another? John. The same John that said this is the one that comes from God. The same John was disillusioned. Why? Because he was offended in Christ. Jesus said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. You were praying. Something did not happen. You've taken offense. Of all the people to be offended with, it's God you want to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? You act like you have another God. Glory to God. You act like as if this God is, is plan B. He said, I'm no more going to church. I'm no more going to church. Okay, who are you doing? No, calm down. Whose benefit is the church? Is it my benefit? Ah, uh, no, no. He said, eh, I'm not praying again. Ah, uh, <laughs> Hey, hey. You see, the point is this. They need to open your eyes. You need to see that even the prayer that you were praying and you were praying in your weakness, that prayer was effective. Offense, offense will block what you can receive from someone. Offense can limit potential. Just imagine the collaboration that could have happened perhaps with Paul and Barnabas. Offense will limit potential. Offense will, li will limit, will not... <laughs> Hey, you know that people don't refer people they are offended with. Are you aware? They know that you are looking for a boyfriend. But they know a guy who can be the guy. But because you are fighting, you say, mm. That's why the Bible says, as much as it's in your power, live at peace with who? All men. Because the more people you are fighting with, the more you are blocking channels of blessing. Somebody say Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So it can hinder good referral. It can give you a bad reputation. Why is it that people lose good relationships? Lack of emotional maturity. They lack emotional maturity. You cannot overcome the flaws you see in others. Listen to me. The only reason you can point a finger is because you think you are perfect. There is no mentor that does not have comma. Why? Because they are human. Some of you, I've seen people who say, hey, he's going through a divorce. Ah, I'm not going there again. No. Ah, ah. When did divorce limit his business capability? I, do you understand what I'm saying? I know what I'm going there for. You know, one day we were talking, Pastor Baji said, you people don't know. He said, I can learn from Satan. I, see, some of you say, hey, Satan. You don't understand. When he comes to you, he doesn't come like Satan. He can be in that guy that is Satan. I, do you understand? Fine boys, third, six pack, 12 pack, all the pack. But Satan is living inside him. When you sit down, you will learn organization from Satan. How he's able to make people feel like he's everywhere at the same time. It's a skill. Satan, how are you doing it? You need to ask him. Why? Because the way people are killing him, wouldn't they have died by now? But he's still everywhere, going through and fro, looking for whom he <laughs> uh, The guy is good. No, 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 no. Give it to him. No, but boy, that guy. But you are more than conquerors. Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. For some people, lack of emotional maturity is pride. Pride. Some of you, your mentor rebukes you. I say, how can he talk to me like that? Ah, it's because you are not yet there. If you did what you did to you, you will insult yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, can he talk to me like that? Eh? Who is he? Is it because I'm coming to him for something? Uh, have you gotten what you're looking for? If you have not gotten it, better drink the humble juice of humility and go. When you have, see, after you have received what you want, nobody can collect it from you. He said, matter, matter. You are worried about many things. He said, but one thing is needful. And once that thing has been collected, it cannot be taken away. Lacking emotional maturity. Lacking emotional maturity. You must talk anyhow. You must say everything. 
He said, eh, and he didn't even apologize. What are you looking for? Apology or lesson? Amen. What are you looking for? Glory, you know, I, I, I put something up on my social media one time. I said, listen, one day God spoke to me. He said, no adult is responsible for believing in another adult. In other words, when they ask you, why are you not doing well? Nobody believes in me. Nobody believes in me. Ah, have you heard people like that before? Nobody believes in my potential. I said, just give me a chance. Give me a chance and I'll prove to you. Nobody has any responsibility for giving you anything. God is the giver of all things. He uses men. You are not the dictator of men. So God told me, stop whining. I said, yes, boss. Glory to God. I said, glory to Jesus. I said, glory to Jesus. Pride, pride, pride. You know, I've seen some people, you know, you are, you are chasing a relationship, you are chasing a mentor. And I say, eh, I've been calling him, he's not even calling me back. Ah. It's not time yet. The day he will call you back, it will see still far. He say he's too busy. Is he not supposed to be busy? Will you choose a mentor that is not busy? You see somebody loafing around, faffing. Say, ha ha, that's my mentor. He's not your mentor, he's your tormentor. He's your tormentor because he's about to torment you. Praise the Lord. The other reason is greed. 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 The fact that you just want to grab everything. Some of us are so desperate for the things we want in a relationship that we don't even bother to consider what the other person wants, wants as well. Greed. And listen, eh, greed will lead to sin and betrayal. Just ask Judas Iscariot. Greed will lead to sin and to betrayal. Greed will rob you of God's best. Ask Gehazi. Greed will rob you of God's best. Greedy people are looking for what to get and they lack foresight. That's why when, when somebody came and poured an alabaster box on Jesus' feet, right? The first thing Judas was saying is that, ah, they could have used this money for something else. And the Bible tells us that the reason he was saying it was not because he cared for the poor. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes, and that's why when you comment on certain things, you need to be careful what you're talking about. Because many people that are talking don't really care about what they're saying. They're just talking so that they can feel among. So you need to be careful what you believe. You need to be careful who you listen to. Why don't people effectively leverage a relationship? Familiarity. 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 Familiarity was what happened to, to Miriam and Aaron, right? When they felt that they had gotten to a point where they could start telling Moses what to do. Numbers chapter 12, from verse 1 to 10. Familiarity. Familiarity will stifle favor. Ask Vashti. Vashti said, king said, come. Listen, I, see, I don't understand. In fact, I can't remember who it was that was having a conversation with me. I said, eh, but Vashti was right. I said, you don't understand. The point is this. It's not about, it's about what is being demanded per time. And he said, what if she was busy? See, that's the problem. See, this 21st century life. Eh? See, eh? <clears throat> let me just leave it. Amen. Let me just leave it. See, eh? what's the catch? be busy doing her own thing. You don't understand. The king called you. It's not about the king calling you. It's the office that is calling you. Glory to God. So, familiarity will make people, will just turn favor to disfavor. All of, see, anybody that you see that has made you distant and they have stopped picking your calls, check it. Most times it's familiarity. You have gone to say something that you should not say. I remember one time, so one of my friends, you know, ha, ha, you know, herself and another friend were hanging out with in, in, you know, in one of their mentor's houses. And, you know, they were just gisting, gisting, gisting. And you know what happened? The one took her wig and removed it. They were just, it's play, oh. Ah, that play cost two weeks of no talking. The girl was begging. He said, what did I do? He said, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, what happened? What happened? He said, nothing. You didn't do anything. That was after she picked for the first time in seven days. Then she gave it another seven days again. 
Why? When people don't know their boundary, you treat them with a stick. Touch them from afar. Wow. Are you okay? Thank you, Lord. Familiarity. Because familiarity is the first step to disrespect. Are you aware? Uh, the next step, uh, Bible says, when sin is fully conceived, when familiarity don't bump, it was in fully pregnant. One day, the guy will just call you a name they should not call you in the public. The fact that, listen, eh, listen, the fact that, you know, someone was uh, uh, your friend in school, and while you were in school, you have a nickname for him. You now got on national TV, you know, maybe he's the, now the governor of the states. And you look at him, and you're calling him by that nickname. Ah, it's over. You will not enter that state house again. Familiarity. Glory to God. The Bible says that Jesus could not do mighty works in a particular place because of familiarity. Familiarity can lead to loss. Familiarity can lead to loss. Oh, why do people, you know, lose good relationships? They lose focus on why the relationship is important. They lose focus. See, eh, there are certain people, no matter how familiar I am with, with them, and how much they say I'm their friend, I know I'm not their friend. Ah, they are my ogres. And you see, even if you want me to be your friend, I can't be your friend. Why? What you have that I want, I must be in a posture of sonship to receive it. No matter how much you are sending to your father, he's not your friend. He's still your father. A word from his mouth can open doors for you. Because, but now, because you are now sending home money home, you can talk anyhow. You say, who is it that is talking when money has not spoken? Ah, your money die with you. There are certain things money can buy. When your father touches the ground or touches anything he considered sacred and blesses you. He said, give me venison such as I love. Why? I want to provoke something, sir. I want to provoke something. See, God bless you and God bless you. You know there are two different blessings. Same words, different impact. There are some people, they will give you a gift like, Praise God. Lacking conviction in the relationship. Some of you are chasing relationships that you are not convinced about. There's a lady called Opa in the Bible. Ruth, in fact, you don't even know her name. In fact, when I, when I, saw, when I thought about this, I had to go, go back and check. That was this girl's name. I forgot her name. Because we remember Ruth. We remember Naomi. But some of you, if I ask you, who is Opa? You say, sorry, are you talking Oprah Winfrey or somebody like that? There was actually someone called Opa. But the relationship with Naomi was not a relationship of conviction. So she left. Paul said the same thing. That this particular guy, he has forsaken me. So how do you engage relationships that you've identified? How do you engage relationships that you have identified? So once you've identified someone that you believe that, you know, um, it's a relationship that you are pursuing. Or it's a relationship that, you know, you would like uh, to get value from. Right? Uh, uh, the first thing is this. Think about how you can add value to that person. Think about how you can add value to that person. Too many people are reaching out to people just because of what they can get from them. So when you come with a mindset of adding value to them, you distinguish yourself from day one. The Bible says in 1 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says that uh, 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 Elisha was the one that poured water on the hands of Elijah. You know what that means? The way they described him was by the value he added. In other words, they looked at someone and they said, oh, that guy, that guy that is always helping many people. I, do you understand what I'm saying? They don't know your name, but they know your value. I do, do you understand what I'm saying? They know the value that you add. They know that you are a person of value. Do your research. What is it that they like and they don't like? You know, one day, Pastor Balaji was going to have a meeting with someone, right? He was going to meet this particular gentleman. This man came into the country, uh, you know, and Pastor Balaji wanted to ask him some questions. So he was going to have a meeting with him. And he had done some research to find out the kind of perfume that the man likes. 
I don't know how he found out. But he bought the perfume and took it for the meeting. When he went for the meeting, right, it was in a hotel here. When he went for the meeting, he, you know, he gave the man, you know, that, sir, I just came, I wanted to ask you a few questions, but I also brought you something. The man's heart opened up to him. In fact, I didn't know how much of an impact it made on him until one day that man was writing a book and referenced Pastor Bolaji's visit in his book. He said, this gentleman, he will go far. Value, value. Some of you will go, ha, sorry, sir, just two questions, very quickly, very quickly. They don't know you from anywhere. Nothing occurs to you that how can I add value back? It's just give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. <laughs> grab all you can. Can all you grab and sit on the can like a territorial spirit. Keep it up. He's waiting for you in front. Glory to God. I remember I was also trying to meet somebody. I've, I think I've shared the story before. I was trying to meet someone, and everybody that goes, you know, is always like, guy, you are smart, you are this, you are that. What did I go and buy? It's my wife that even advised me. I said, babe, what can I take to this man? He said, go and buy fruit. See, some people, things like that occur to them naturally. It doesn't occur to me that, oh, this is what you can do. So I hang out with people that occur to them. So, so, for example, if you want to meet a relationship, one of the best people you can talk to is Pastor Balaji. He knows what to do. I don't know how he knows. But he knows what to do that that relationship will have value. Glory to God. Some of us, we have to learn it. Some people are gifted with it. God, is not fair. Eh, it's, it's okay now. I can be complaining. I can find a way out. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. If the person you are going to see is a gadget person, find something online. Order it from Amazon. Don't go and buy it from... Uh, <coughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. How can you add value? How can you add value? Always, listen, wherever you go, think about how you can add value. How can you add value? How can you add value? See, if you're a lady and you want to toast a guy, but you don't want the guy to know you are toasting him. <coughs> add value. See, when you just see him in church, just say, hi, how are you? He say, fine, just go. Don't be in the hurry. You are too much in the hurry. My name is Kike. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. That's desperate. Hi, how are you? Go. Be going. Next time you see him, hello, how are you? Sorry, what's your name? Okay, all right, thank you. Be going. See, little drops of water is what makes a mighty ocean. Let me tell you what will happen. One day, the guy will say, please, I'm looking for the restroom. It's you they allow me to look for. <laughs> Why? Nobody else is talking to them. Oh, no, it's that way. You have added value. One value. Why? Listen, the problem is this. Eh? You see, you need to understand, relationships are like bank accounts. If you want to redraw, you must have made deposits. Your check will bounce if your debt redrawal is bigger than your deposit. You've not made any deposit. You are just withdrawing. You are just withdrawing. Ah, you know your best song. We've come to draw. 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 Draw from you again. You say, I'm not your Jesus. Be going. Some people are like straw. <laughs> Hallelujah. Think, how can you add value? Number two. Respect boundaries. Understand boundaries and respect boundaries. You can't meet somebody yesterday. Today you are showing up in their house when they've not invited you. They say, sir, I've been watching you. That's why. That's why I came. See, restraining order is what they'll give you. Understand boundaries. You can't call certain people at certain times. You don't have that level of relationship yet. Respect boundaries. I've seen people that will just be calling me. I don't know you. I don't know your number. They'll just be calling me. Calling me. Calling me. Calling me. I'll just be looking at the phone. Mm hmm? Okay. Wisdom will tell you when you're finished to send a text. Sir, this is me. When can I call you? Eh. And when they pick your call, sir, is this a good time? It shows you respect the other person. No? Ha, ah, sir, thank God. I've been trying to reach you for 200 years. <laughs> See, some of you are just too desperate. See, I know you want a change. Even God knows that this guy deserves a change. But calm down. Suppress your desire. 
Because it will come out one day. Good measure, press down, shaking together. But follow the process. Follow the process. Hallelujah. See, just, just show up in people's private space. You say, hey, is, I'm waiting for you at the office, sir. Did I call you? Number three, serve, service, and invest in the relationship. Find a way to invest in the relationship. If they're trying to get something done, find a way to see if you can help them. If your mentor is trying to maybe look for a school for their child and you know about it, go and search all the good schools. Do a small one-page report and say, sir, I've done a quick research. I think that if you're looking for this, 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 these are the schools. Ah! They say, this one, he knows what he's doing. Why? Nobody wants to waste their time. Find a way to serve. Find a way to find, you know, look for what we can do to help. Number four, be consistent. Be consistent. Some of you are trying to connect with people, right, that are not ready for you. It does not mean they don't want you in their life. It just means that maybe that time is not a good time. Be consistent. Let me tell you, if I count the number of people that have come to meet me and say, sir, please mentor me. If I count for every bag of cement, I will have built house. But most of them, you know, in fact, now, eh, I'm not even afraid again. Before I used to be afraid that, oh my God, they'll be distraught. They'll be calling me, they'll be reaching out to me. Like, 99.9% will forget two weeks. Ah, no, two weeks. You can't build a relationship that way. Imagine you want to date a woman. You toast her day one. You are now toasting again day, day 35. This one is not serious. Because in between that time, nature above is vacuum. Praise God. Another will have come to take your place. Another more consistent brethren. He said, ah, but I was there first. Hey, I get them before. No be property. Oh. Mm, no be property. Consistency. I was talking to one of my mentors. He said there are relationships he has been chasing for two years. I said, how? He said, every month I service I just send them a message. When I read anything online about them, I send them a message. If they are promoted at work and they publish it in the newspaper, I, send, I say, sir, congratulations. They will say thank you. They don't even know who they are thanking. Uh, but you are, are you not exchanging something? You know why? The day another text message comes and they've met you before, they will now scroll. I say, oh, it has been you. Okay, you are not a stranger. But some of you don't understand. So you want to bombard people as a stranger. Nobody likes strangers. When you're not an angel. Just bombard people anyhow. They say, I come to you in the power of the Spirit. They will cast you out like a bad habit. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. One of the things one of my mentors taught me is, listen, you are trying to build a relationship. Just be consistent. One day, you know, there was a time, you know, someone I was trying to build a relationship, I'd sent messages, you know, every month, you know, I'd just send message, you know, send this, do this, do that, do that. One day, the guy replied. He said, sorry, who is this? I said, sir, you don't know me, but this is who I am, blah, 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 blah. He said, oh, right, okay. Then I continued. Because he didn't say stop. <laughs> are you following me? But at least we have exchanged something, glory to God. The next time, it will not be who are you. It will be, oh, I remember you. And I remember you. It's better than, oh, sorry. What did you say? Is that, is, this thing is just be strategic. Praise God. And if you want to be strategic, move with people that are strategic. Praise God. Last thing is this, pray. Pray. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. God said that I will give you pastors after my heart. In other words, God is the one that gives with certain relationships. See, and let me tell you something. Prayer works so. If there is any, I cannot overemphasize the importance and the power of praying, especially in relationships. Especially in relationships. See, there are relationships that I have enjoyed. Eh? That prayer, I know that this relationship, eh, the only way this could have happened is prayer. See, eh? you, you, see you need to understand something. Eh? What makes people like, like people is small. Though. It's not something big. It's not like you bought a private jet. Do you understand what I'm saying? It can just be the fact that we are in an audience like this and you asked a very intelligent question or a question that I consider intelligent, even though others may think it's stupid. I, do you understand what I'm saying? He said, oh, I like that guy. After the meeting, please call that guy. See, it takes prayer. Listen, I, 
No matter how much Joseph can interpret dreams, if Pharaoh does not dream, his interpretation is useless. And only God creates certain kinds of connections. You will pray. What are you going to pray about? Number one, you will pray that their hearts will open up to you. Pray that their hearts will open up to you. Why? The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he waves it with us wherever he wills. And let me tell you something, eh? Because this principle works when you're praying for someone to get born again. What happens is this. Whenever you're praying for people, God begins to open up opportunities for those people to experience what you're praying about. When you're praying for someone to get born again, God begins to bring them into places that they have opportunity to get born again. When you're praying for relationships in your life, God begins to bring your, them opportunities to connect with you. You're going to pray that your pathways will cross and that you will be noticed. Everybody, listen, what wisdom told Zacchaeus that if you want to see Jesus, go on top of a tree? Do you understand what I'm saying? No book could have taught Zacchaeus that principle 101, steps to meeting Jesus. Hang on a tree. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you that when you are a prayerful person, eh, the spirit of God will lead you to do things that will connect you with the people you are trying to connect with. Pray. Pray that you will not say the wrong thing. Because one wrong statement can kill a relationship before it starts. Just imagine you are normally an articulate person and then you met your hero and then all of a sudden English failed you. Has that happened to you before? He's, <sighs> Sir, I've been trying to spoke to you. I heard about a, an interview. Two people, they were trying to you know, um, uh, apply for a CEO position. The interviewers had interviewed two of them. Two of them, first class, top schools, everything. There was no other criteria to use to distinguish the two of them. So they had somehow made up their mind that, look, we'll find a way to, to pick one out of the two of them. All of a sudden, something happened. So they wanted to call them to say that, um, um, you know, have you submitted this thing? So they called the first guy. And the guy said, ah, this very articulate guy, the guy said, ah, Shebi, you guys said, they called the second guy. He spoke normally. The way they disqualified that guy was Shebi. Shebi that he said that in normal parlance, when you are talking, Shebi. My brother, that's what they used to disqualify him from the job of his dreams. Ah, you will pray that your Shebi will not cause error. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? That you're not going to say something that enters the wrong side of the person's ear. That when you want to say the wrong thing, your tongue will cleave to the roof of your mouth. And, oh, oh, um. Have you learned something this morning? Lift your hands and let us pray. Lift your hands and let us pray. Father, relationships that open doors, doors that have been knocking on, let them come into my life in this season. In the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Relationships. Relationships that open doors. Doors that have been knocking on. Doors that have been trying to get into. Let those relationships come into my life in this season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, that there will be a divine orchestration. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. You are declaring that your steps are ordered. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said a believing amen. Let's put those hands together for Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah.